Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, that's my brother Mike and his Suzuki Carry. I'm Andy from Olympic Overland and this is my 91 Honda Acti Attack. So both trucks are lifted with low range and rear diff locks. They also have 13 inch rims with 4CM mud terrain tires and those hook up really good, uh, especially in a lot of the wet conditions we have in the Northwest. They're an eight ply tire, so really sturdy and, uh, and good load capacity. This video is about a 24 hour trip that my brother Mike and I took. Uh, it's a mini trip in the mini trucks with mini bikes and we covered close to 200 miles so we were on the move. We found some a really cool spot to camp and some great places to ride the mini bikes so stick around. Autumn in the northwest is a special time. The rivers are alive, fish are jumping, Leaves are changing, and the mornings are quiet. So leaving on this trip, there, there was no set plan. Uh, just the fact that we both had some free time seemed like a good enough reason to hit the road. And that kind of seems to be the way most of my trips end up going. We've both done a fair amount of tuning to the to the Coleman mini bikes recently and we're pretty excited to get those out and run them around a little bit. Fun fact about my brother Suzuki Carry is uh, it has a diff lock rear differential, but when he went to go look at it, it was advertised as a diff lock truck, but it didn't actually have a diff lock. Somebody had removed it, maybe blew up the diff lock at one point, uh, and put a non locking rear differential. So when he went to go look at it, he climbed underneath the truck and didn't see a diff lock actuator on it or even a spot for that to be installed. So he bought the truck anyway and went on a big search, um, calling parts houses in different spots in the US. And he found a distributor that handled key truck parts and they had a rear axle with the correct gear ratio and a diff lock that he was able to get shipped. I think he paid around 500 bucks for the axle, but uh, after an evening of swapping it over and setting up a custom vacuum actuator on it, he's got a, a rear diff lock in his truck again and the truck gets incredible traction. We're gonna look for somewhere to camp in this area tonight, maybe. But uh, for now, we're gonna get the mini bikes out for a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Get a little bit of ripping on the mini bikes for sure. So the Colmans are getting pretty quick. We uh, we repowered them with Harbor Freight Predator motors. Mine has a Ghost 212 in it, and Mike's has a Max Power 224. Um, some aftermarket parts on them. They're getting they're getting pretty fast but I'm always surprised at how cheap mini bike parts are compared to all of our other dirt bikes. Uh, we both have two-stroke trail bikes. Uh, Mike's got a KTM 200 XCW, and I have a Beta 300. They're fun. I haven't really been riding them since we got the mini bikes. Like, they're, they're great, man. The mini bikes have been a lot of fun. So we survived the gravel pit ripping. Both of us had a couple couple close calls. I don't know how much of it we got on video, but it was super fun anyway. All right, we're running out of light, so I think we're gonna try to try to find a spot to camp here pretty soon, but yeah. that was it's pretty rad. Yeah, so many bugs right now, it's crazy. Man, those are like greasy bugs, dude. So many. <laughs> that bus, the that. city bus had so many on it. Oh, that windshield's giant. I'm sure it collected a few thousand on the way out here. 
maybe it'll bother me. <laughs> Okay, so it's starting to get dark, but uh, we're scouting this spot. I think I got a pretty good campsite. We can drive right down to the side of this river. It's kind of a big rutted section at the bottom. Oh, it's rough through here. Anyway, uh, I might go back there. So yeah, hopefully we can get down. Hopefully there's no trees down over the trail uh, and we can make it through, but so far it's looking pretty good. Looking forward to making some food, setting up camp. I'll probably just sleep in the back of the truck tonight instead of setting up my tent. I don't think it's supposed to rain. It's looking pretty clear, so it should be good. Walk in there. After a long day, it was nice to follow the steep rutted trail down to the river, cook dinner, and set up camp for the night. <laughs> Go get some dogs. It's <laughs> pretty good camp food, man. Dogs. Yeah, they work pretty good. <laughs> it's a bean on these dogs. Magic combo. Slept pretty good last night. I'm glad I threw the I'm glad I threw the rain fly for my tent over my sleeping bag. Because it got super wet last night. A lot of moisture. amount of moisture that settled like it hasn't rained here in quite a while but there's still plenty of uh, plenty of moisture coming down just as dew oh this is why I use kayak bags and waterproof bags for everything it's wet but we got a beautiful spot at the camp right here on the river good Cafe Bastello. Oh, you get your own special coffee? I think it was just one of the cheapest ones I could find somewhere. That's all right. It might be a two-pack morning. You got Mountain Hagen. You got the Mountain, Mountain Hagen. That's what it is. You got mine's like. Dude, those look way nicer. Well, it's just nicer packaging. Mine are Instantaneo. Yours are German. Yeah. Wow, it's deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> it's from New York. Oh, the Germans certified it, but it's from New York. <laughs> well, either way, we're going to mix this in there, too. Coffee time. So I was walking along the river here, and I saw this interesting-looking rock. It's strange. The route looks like it goes up through there, so we'll probably cross this.
Funny thing about these Coleman mini bikes is one Coleman mini bike quickly turns into two Coleman mini bikes, and two Coleman mini bikes are a lot of fun because then you got somebody to ride with. And in our case, the two Coleman mini bikes have now turned into three and four Coleman mini bikes. So my girlfriend bought one, and uh, my son has one now. So when you got a pack of mini bikes, it's good times. Yeah, let's uh, let's check this one out. I don't know where this goes. Time to pack up camp and head down the river to see where this trail went. Lucky that the rainy season hadn't started yet. In another couple weeks, the water level would be too high to cross, and we'd have to wait until next summer to find out where this trail went. Well, that river crossing was pretty cool. We're just gonna go figure out where this trail goes. first gear of this truck and it's first standard first is pretty low but uh, coming up here there's some steep a steep drop and I'm gonna probably go into uh, shift into ultra low range yeah we'll go ahead and pull up the detent on the shifter drop it into ultra low and put my dip lock on for this creek crossing. A little green light actuates on the dash once the dip lock's engaged. So I do not want to get stuck in the middle of this little river. <laughs> so it looks like we're coming out to a clearing up here, uh, getting through the trees. Uh, we went past a pretty muddy spot back there too. It was like a like a swamp. Temp's not bad. Here's some fish jumping.
river rock is pretty rough stuff. Bumpy ride. Those river rocks, man. Bumpy. That's a good spot, though. It's pretty nice down here. I'm going to lay out some of the camping gear, dry it, and then uh, we'll probably head out to the coast and take a, take a route back um, through the coast. But that's a fish bone. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see some whales on the coast. I don't know. We'll see. Sunshine. Should dry this stuff off pretty quick. Meanwhile, we got a nice place to hang out for the next 10 minutes. All right, so we're heading back out. So I'm on this little connector road, this little piece of highway. Towards the beach and along the straits. I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not, but it's really, uh, really hazy out here. There's a lot of forest fire smoke. It looks like it just blew in. And it's probably coming down from British Columbia, up north in Canada. washes out so um, it was a pretty wet winter they've gotten a lot of it pieced back together but it's uh, you see all this the way that you could probably jump that in a street bike but it's pretty rough everything's just settling and sinking underneath this area so we're kind of lucky that it's open right now brutal yeah that was a huge hole uh, they're trying to fix up this part of the highway but it's yeah, this route's in pretty rough shape. Oh. Oh. That was like a curb step right out in the middle of the highway. Get a look at the water. Looks like a lot of, a lot of people down here today. A little smoky, but there's no surf today, so that explains why this area is not as packed. It's rowboatable though. Yeah. A rowboat guy. <laughs> like a six foot rowboat. <laughs> thing is tiny. All right, so it's a home stretch. I think we covered between 150 to 200 miles, lots of dirt roads. If you liked what you saw, and you want to follow along for some more trips and see some more mini bike footage and mini truck footage, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're already subscribed, thanks. I'm trying to grow the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Changes around me